All right, hello, fellow coder. Welcome to this next lesson. Uh, as promised, we're going to be diving into leveraging Spring Data JPA, which sounds like a mouthful, uh, but thankfully the code is not. Uh, it's fairly straightforward. So the code, what we're going to be doing is um, leveraging something that's that, you know code that someone else wrote um, to allow us to do the basic uh, SQL you know database uh, interactions. So uh, reading, uh, creating, reading, updating, and deleting data. CRUD, for short, um, is what we do with databases all the time, right? That's the, those are the four main things you can do with any database is create, read, update, or delete data. Uh, and that's what Spring Data JPA brings to the table is being able to do that very, very quickly. So <clears throat> in order to do that, first you need an entity in which to communicate with, in other words, a database table to do the CRUD on. Uh, so check. The next thing is we need to create uh, the tie-in with that. So um, we need to create a essentially a repository. So let me create a new package, and uh, we'll call it repository. Um, and these packages, you don't have to use all these packages. Uh, this is just you know one way to organize your your code code. That was very Canadian of me to pronounce it that way. Uh, that's one way to organize your code, right? is to do it uh, like I'm showing you here. So in the repository uh, section or package, we're actually going to create an interface this time. Okay, um, an interface is well. Hopefully, hopefully you know what an interface is. If you, if you made it this far in the in the series, um, and if you don't know what an interface is, then you know you're you're maybe in a little bit over your head. But yeah, interfaces are just uh, you know. Uh, code that doesn't allow you to really define a body unless you define default. But anyway, um, it allows you to uh, define uh, sort of the stubs of code. So it's it's essentially the contract is what the uh, fancy word is for it. So uh, we create an interface and this will be the um, match repository. So match because it's going to be uh, tied to the match entity and repository because it is going to be a repository. <clears throat> so uh, what we do here to leverage Spring Data JPA is type in essentially two words, which is extends, uh, what is it called? JPA repository. Okay, so JPA repository comes from Spring Data JPA, imagine that, and JPA repository takes two, uh, two generics. The first one is the type of the primary key for the database table for the entity. And the other is, or sorry, sorry, the ID here, the type of the ID. The other one is the um, uh, the type of the entity itself, or the entity itself. So the entity itself, and then the uh, the uh, type of the ID for the primary key uh, inside of that entity, which is just a long way of saying it wants match, and it probably wants along, right? Because inside of match, match is the the, the table that we're we're working with, right? Um, uh, which is the, na the name of the class is called match. And then the ID's type, the ID here, the primary, the ID, the primary key uh, is the type is long, right? So long is there. So a lot of these repositories look the same, right? It's just the entity, which we'll import. And it comes from uh, this one. And then the type of the primary key. And that's it. We're done. We've now created the the stub that we need to uh, do all the the magic with our uh, what you call it with our uh, database to interact with our, with our database so if we go to the service now we can actually bring in uh, this repository so we can say private uh, what is it called match repository match repository and then we'll use constructor injection or wiring or constructor wiring. Again, I forgot the name of this constructor in, constructor injection. Uh, we do alt insert on the on my PC, and I generate a constructor. And I want to bring in the match repository, and voila! So the match repository will be uh, injected via uh, wiring in here, and then passed and set into the private field here. And then we can now make use of the match repository here, which is where we want to check to see if this lead already exists. So how do we check to see if the lead already exists? Well, we can say match repository dot, and look at all this beautiful stuff we can do with the match repository. So all these are the CRUD operations um, that come built in to uh, our repository. Now, <clears throat> having said that, 
it's not entirely useful for this particular case um, because we want to how are we going to look up to see if a, a, a match exists? How do we see if a contact already exists? Um, if, if the email address for the contact is like the, the unique key for it, meaning it's this is the, the this will, you know, there will never be a duplicate for this thing. The email address will always be unique in the table. Uh, then that's a good way to, to use to, to query, right? And we're going to have that data coming in, right? Um, when we When we query the mock API, or the real API eventually, uh, we will get that data back. We will get the uh, uh, the email address. So we want to look up by email address. We want to find by email address, essentially. But that, that doesn't exist. You can't say dot find by <clears throat> email, right? We can say find by, uh, you know, with a function. We can do find by ID, find all by ID. Um, so there's no find by email address. So we're going to have to in input that ourselves. We're going to have to inject that ourselves. Uh, le actually, let me uh, just comment that out. Uh, or let me do it this way. Okay. Um, so we go back to the repository. So I said it's, you know, not, not many lines of code. And that's true. Getting up and running out of the box is not many lines of code. It's literally, you know, you can argue it's one line of code, right? So uh, what we want to do, though, is create a way to find by email address. So if we look at the match uh, rec uh, entity, you see that it has a field, a property called email. And the name of this is going to matter. Okay, so it, it's called email, not email address, not anything else. It's just called email. So what we can do in the repository with this one line of code, we can add uh, a stub that says find by email. <clears throat> okay, open close bracket. And if we're finding by email, if you think about the, the query that we need to use to find, we need to say, you know, the query would look something like select star from uh, match contact, I think is the name of the table, where email equals, and then something, right? The, the email address will be here. So we do need to give it this. We need to tell it uh, what the email address is that we're searching for. Uh, we, we've already sort of told it this half. Just by saying find by email, we've already kind of told it to select star from match contact because it's right here in this, it's in this repository, the, the, the match repository. So it just knows it's going to be selecting from match contact. Cool. Um, and then the where email kind of comes from the find by email, right? Because we're finding by the email. So we're saying where the email, but then we need to pass in what that email is. So we pass that in here. We say string. Uh, you know, email. Now, this could be whatever you want. Again, this could be the, the famous dog poop if you wanted to. Um, it's it's this here that matters. This has to say email. This has to match with the name of the property. So if you wanted to search by created at, you'd have to say find by created at or find by full name or find by phone number, right? Or find by ID, okay? So the find by is required to be just like this. And then, you know, camel case, it has to be camel case, otherwise it won't work. Um, so case matters. And then email is the yeah, the name of the, of the field. So, uh, and then this can just, yeah. But I, usually you want to call this email because that's kind of what you're passing in, right? So you find by email. Now, this needs to return something, right? It returns something back. Now, since we know that an email, if we find by an email, email is going to either find a match, one match, exactly one match, or no matches, right? It, it, you got to find it one and just one or we find none so that's important to understand so if we know it should always find uh one only one or zero the zero means it can be optional right so we, it can return it, uh, it can return nothing right it can it return it can find nothing so the best uh uh way to do this is to have it return an optional of something and it's going to return an optional of what well a single match we're going to be finding a match by email address. So note that this is just a singular match. If there could be more than one match, right? If email was not unique, then we would maybe have a set of matches, right? We could potentially be returning a set of matches or a list of matches. Um, but in this case, we know that it, we will never have more than one because match I or email is unique. All right, let's import optional. Um, Import optional. There we go. And that's how we do it, right? <clears throat> uh, cool. So now we have created a little stub where 
it will now do what we want it to do. So we can go back to the service and we can, this guy here, the match repository dot find by, uh, when we want to check to see if a lead or exists, we can say find by email. And what email do we pass in? Well, we, we're iterating through all the responses from the uh, API, <coughs> excuse me. So we can say find by match dot email, right? Match is what we're iterating through. We're iterating through all the matches and calling them match. So we can say get the, get the email from this match and find by that. So this is going to return what? It's going to return, oops, how do you do this? Uh, an optional of match, right? So I would call this a match OPT. Um, actually, no, let's call this match. Maybe call it a match OPT. Uh, and the reason why I'm doing uh, calling it a match is because uh, we've already used match here. So I don't, when you have an OPT at the end, once you f get the actual match itself, you're going to probably name it back to match. Um, anyway, maybe I would change this. This is kind of like, anyway, I don't know. We're getting into the weeds here. What should we name variables? So anyway, this will allow us to find <clears throat> by email. And now we can basically have, we can say, hey, a match.opt dot, if present, so if it is present, then uh, do one thing. And if it's not present, do something else, if present or else, right? So um, if it is present, we have the, uh, <clears throat> what you call it? Uh, again, a match like this, boom, is the Lambda function and we can have it do something. I think this is the right syntax. Um, let's see. Let's just have it do a system out for now. And we'll say a match. And then otherwise, what do you want it to do otherwise? System out, no match found, right? And what is this, what it's saying? Lambda can be replaced with a method reference. Oh, okay, right, yeah, yeah, anyway, doesn't matter. You can use the double colon syntax. So if I do this, you can do sys out, double colon print line. And, but that's just, to me, yeah, that's, that's a little bit less typing, but it's not as obvious what's happening to some people. This is more obvious. Anyway, cool. So yeah, we can do this, right? We can start the server again and, uh, and see if it finds a match or not, which it won't because there's nothing in the database. But we'll hopefully we'll see no match found, no match found, no match found is what we'll see. There you go. See all the select statements? It selected it to see if it could find those four matches and then it does it again after another polling and it'll do it again and again and again and keep finding no matches in the database because there are no matches to find because there's nothing in the database, right? We haven't inserted anything into the database yet. So that's perfect. That's exactly how <clears throat> we want to have this flow go. Cool. So we check to see if the lead exists. If the lead does exist, oops, let me stop my server so it doesn't keep pinging. If the lead does exist, then it's here. If the lead does not exist, then it is here. So you see our code and the structure is starting to take shape inside of the service. Cool. So in the next one, let's get into, well, diving into one of these two, either the, if the lead exists functionality or if it doesn't, I think I want to start with if it doesn't exist, because that should be easier, because um, we'll insert it into the database. Imagine that. So let's do that in the next one.